I just got back from looking at someone's car I was going to potentially purchase and it was so nasty and disgusting. This is the video today. I'm going to show you guys if you're going to sell your car, what to do, what not to do as far as cleanliness and the presentation of your car. Let's take a look. So this thing is ready for sale. Everything is good in operating order. We're finished with it. The project is done. It's ready to be put on the market. I went through and cleaned up the car, but I only cleaned half of it. And I purposely left some of the other side dirty because I want to show you guys over the 50, 60, or 100 cars that I've either looked at or purchased in my life. You'd be surprised. A lot of them are trashed when I show up to look at them. I actually, like, sometimes it just blows my mind. I'm like, really? This is how you're going to present your car to me? To sell it to me? And I know it's, some of you will say, car wizard, this is common sense. Everybody knows to clean your car before you sell it. No, it's not common sense. If it was, I wouldn't be doing this video, and I wouldn't have seen so many dirty cars over the years. So no, it's not common sense. So we're going to go over basically cleaning the car. We're not going to do a thousand dollar detail like Andrew Holder in Wichita who does excellent work. This, that's not what we're doing today. If you look at Hoovy's DB7, it's actually been sold already on cars and bids. It is fully detailed with one of these expensive details. That's why it has the hairnet looking cover over it to protect it so it's ready and clean for delivery. There's a key thing here. Clean and ready for sale. That's what we're talking about today. Now, like I said, I've gone through and cleaned half of this car, and I didn't spend 10 hours cleaning it. I only spent half an hour or so. It doesn't take a long time, and it doesn't take a lot of effort to really get a decent, nice, clean look on your car. If your car is really dirty and caked with dirt or grime and layers of dirt, you probably want to take it to a car wash and use a pressure washer to get the thing at least somewhat clean before you start wiping on it. This one was fairly clean already. It just had some smudges and things and some dust on it. And if that's the case, you can use glass cleaner, spray detailer, uh, various different things, even spray wax, just to wipe the car down and get it nice and clean. Again, we're not doing a full detail. We're just getting it presentable. On this half of the car, as far as the paint's concerned, I actually just used some invisible glass. This is actually a very dirty microfiber cloth. It was used cleaning this thing. But microfiber is the way to go. You don't want to use a shop towel or shop rag. That'll really mess up the paint. And this one doesn't have beautiful, perfect paint, but it's decent. It's fair. As you can see, the driver's side is clean, is presentable. The car's ready to be shown for sale. But the passenger side is just nasty. It's got filthy handprints and grime all over it. And that's typically what you can find sometimes on older cars, is where a guy fixed a few items before he was ready to sell it and he got handprints all over the place. I've seen that so many times. I'm going to show you guys just some glass cleaner and a nice microfiber towel will take care of it. You could wax it, you can go into all kinds of detail if you want, but this is just to get it at least clean and ready for sale. All I do is take, take some glass cleaner. I like the aerosol because it doesn't drip off the car, it foams up nice and just wipe the grunge off of it. As you can see, it's already starting to shine up. And we're not really going for the shine, we're just getting the fingerprints and the gunk off of it. The fender already looks better. Look at the hood. I'm not going to clean the whole thing for you guys, but it's nasty. Typically on an older car, you're going to have some pitting on the chrome. You can expect that. That's unless you're buying a showroom perfect car, but this one is not. But as you can see on the driver's side, the chrome is nice and clean. I use the same method. I use glass cleaner and a microfiber towel. And I clean the chrome up. It looks nice. It looks presentable. This is not what you want to see when you go to show your car. Hey, I'm asking six grand, eight grand, ten, whatever for this car, and this is this is what I want to show you. This is sad. It's got grunge and gunk here. It looks like it recently rained on the chrome. So Mrs. Wizard will pan back and forth between the two. Which one would you buy? Which one would you pay top dollar for? The clean chrome 
or the one that looks like it's been through World War II. It doesn't take 20, 30, 40 minutes to clean this. It takes one or two minutes to wipe that down. Now, another thing you can check out when you go to look at a car is glass. And especially if you're presenting and selling the car, you want to clean the glass. You can use the invisible glass that I just showed you and a microfiber towel. You don't have to go out and buy a bunch of stuff at your local friendly store. Just a few items will be fine. The driver's side of the glass is spotless and clean. This side looks like someone's been smoking in it for 10 years and it's got a film all on the top portions up here and all through the inside. It looks really, really grungy. Again, you've got cash in your pocket. Which Cadillac are you going to buy? The driver's side with spotless clean glass or the one that looks like it's been through World War II? I'm going through this to show you guys this video because so many times that I've gone to look at a car and I'm like, you can't stand firm on your price when it looks atrocious. It doesn't take very much and you can get more money. You can stand firm on your price. It's worth it. You don't want to cut yourself out of 500 or a grand because you just didn't want to clean your car. You might be mad at your car. You might be just sick of looking at it, but you still need to get out and clean it and get it ready for sale. Here we have the vinyl top. Half of it's been cleaned and the other half is still nasty and grimy. This is not what you want to show to your potential buyer because I know if I'm the potential buyer, I'm already starting to deduct money off of your asking price when I see this. That means you haven't taken care of the car. Probably the rest of it is that way. I use this product from CRS called Flashy Shine. I don't even know if you guys can buy it. This is like professional level cleaner. I just want to show you what I use. But it not only cleans the dirt off, but it leaves it very shiny, like brand new vinyl. Just like that. You can clean this whole top in less than five minutes. And you can stand firmer on your price based on the fact that it's presentable and clean. Now let's just pretend that you just drove up, you're potentially going to buy this Cadillac. This is what you want to see when you walk up behind this car. Where Mrs. Wizard is standing right now is potentially where you'll be standing. And you'll look down the length of this car and say, wow, that thing sparkles. It looks really good. I'm starting to feel good about this car already. This side looks dull. It's about half as shiny. The vinyl top looks like it's been through a sandstorm. You start to not feel so good about the car when you first walk up by seeing this. I don't know, I mean, there's so many times when people go to list these cars, they just go out and take pictures. They don't even clean it, and then you show up to look at the car, and I, I know I, I'm just like, whoa! Could you just wipe it down? Or I've actually gone online, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, whatever it is that you choose to shop for cars, and I've seen pictures for cars that are for sale. The interior is dirty, and I haven't even gone to look at the car yet, and that immediately is a red flag to me. Yeah, you should go on Marketplace and you'll find tons of trucks and cars and, and it's just like they just sit in there at the kitchen table and go, hey, let's sell the car and then go take a picture of it and post it and then wonder why six months gone by and they haven't sold their car when then on the pictures on Marketplace it has five inches of dirt and dust on the outside of the car. It, it really makes it very difficult for people to judge the condition of the car and they're going to pass that car over and move to something else for sale on that on that page or whatever the site is that they're looking at. Yeah, you've told me stories before where you've looked at trucks for sale when you were looking for trucks. It's like they went mud bogging and mudded and they didn't even <laughs> wash it and they posted it for sale. Yeah, you know, the, the bed of the truck's still full of whatever they've been hauling in the bed of the truck. And when you're selling a vehicle, everyone's going to show up and they're going to come look at the thing and you're going to find, you're going to learn more that's wrong with your vehicle in the next week than you ever knew that was wrong with your vehicle before. Right. They're going to point out everything that you've looked over and didn't even realize that was wrong. But to, to catch the person's eye, you, you got to clean it up. You got to make it look good. And you, to bring them in because they're not they're going to pass it up and move on to the next vehicle right. people are very leery when they're buying a used vehicle yeah this is crazy d guys he's been selling stuff to people since he was able to walk <laughs> he's able to Pretty sell much. stuff really well he knows all the, the ins and outs of sales selling things he would definitely know if anything your car needs to be clean 
So anyways, thanks for your story. Yep, yep. Check out Crazy D's channel. We'll put it in the link description. He's, he's into tractors, he's into agricultural things. You guys are into that. Check his, check his channel out. It's actually really coming along really nice. The next thing, which is totally unexpected to people selling cars, is if I'm going to buy your car, I'm going to open your trunk. I'm going to look inside. This is what I should see when I open your trunk. Maybe the owner's manual, maybe some service records. Maybe that's in your glove compartment, but usually it's in the trunk. And a clean carpet. Nice clean area. It's been taken care of. I'm going to look under your carpet and check the metal, make sure it's not all rotten out. But other than that, this is really what you should be seeing. This, however, is not what people should be seeing. When they come to look at your car, they don't want to see your junk. They don't want to see your jugs of antifreeze. They don't want your bag of tools. They want your dirty rags and crackers. Why are there crackers in the trunk? And I've heard some crazy stories, guys. Oh, we was at the lake. We had a hell of a weekend. You don't want to hear about it? No, I don't want to hear about your weekend. I just think that these crackers in the back of the trunk are disgusting. Get your junk out of the car, guys. And trust me, I wouldn't be bringing this up if I haven't seen this at least 25 times. It's just crazy. It's like, just, just move the stuff out. So, don't let your trunk look like this. Make it look like the first one we showed you. Okay. And before we go into the interior, which will be the last thing we look at, I want to show you guys wheels and tires. If I'm looking at a car, I really don't like to see the tires with armor all on them or something where they look like they're glossy and shiny. I think they should be clean, nice clean rubber without a bunch of cracks in it. That says the best to me. The hubcaps or the wheels shouldn't have brake dust or gunk all over them. They should be clean, shiny like these are, spotless. Let's go take a look at the other side. I don't like armor all on tires because that just attracts dust and dirt and makes it look worse than what you started with. But on the inside of this hubcap, it's just nasty. The wheels are nasty. There's cobwebs all over them. Don't have your potential buyer do this and go, oh my God, clean it. Now the interior is going to be a really big thing. When somebody sits inside, this is where you have been last and this is where they potentially are going to be next after you and they don't want it to be looking like a trash heap. As you can see the dash, I use that same flashy shine and a microfiber towel. It's clean, crack free, has a, a mild gloss to it, not too glossy. The gauges are clean and dust free, the steering wheel's clean, the carpets are vacuumed, the floor mats are clean, the seats are shiny, clean, the leather's in decent shape for being over 50 years old, the doors are shiny and clean, no dirt, no dust, the carpet it doesn't have a bunch of crap in it, and it looks very, very nice and clean. Now, that sidecar was, that looks like the side of a car that I test drove when I was in like college. I was like 19 years old and I thought, I really did need a new car and I went to a dealer. Actually, it was a local dealer in Wichita. They're still open today. But I test, they, I said, can I go back and test drive a car? They're like, sure. They took me to the back. There wasn't a car on the regular up front in the lot. And I, I was like, okay, I was really young, really naive. And they put me in this car. I don't remember what it was. It was a small little four-door sedan. And there was literally French fries on the floor. Everything was grimy to touch. And I thought, okay, maybe I can do this. You know, I can, I could clean a car. I can do, I can handle it. Then I go for a test drive around the block. It wasn't very far. Literally, I saw a whiff of smoke come up. Some electrical thing happened in the steering column. I don't know what it was. I got out of it. You know what? I've never been back to that dealer, ever. And look how many cars now that we've bought together. Over 50. That was a bad mistake for that dealer. Yep. Let's take a look over here and see a site that I see so many times when looking at a car. No, it's not common knowledge to clean your car. I can prove it. Let's take a look. Now, it sounds like in this video, I'm on a rampage. I'm on a rant. I'm trying to get on to you guys. But the reality is, is after seeing this so many times in my life, I want you guys to get the best deal for your car. When you go to sell your car, I hope that you can get the most that you can out of it. 
and I'm showing simple things that don't cost a lot of money that can help you stand firm on your price. You can say, no, I'm not taking less than this amount because it's clean, it's in good shape, and it is presentable. You cannot stand firm on your price at this. Fries are always in cars. I don't know why. They're always. Your dirty rag, nobody wants to see your dirty rag or your Wendy's box. Nobody wants to see what you had last for drink, Dr. Pepper or whatever it is. Nobody wants to sit on your french fries when they go to look at your car. Just, just clean it up. I mean, it really will help you get a better deal for you. That side over there where Mrs. Wizard is at is shiny, clean. The carpet is clean. The footrests are clean. The back of the seat, the front seat is clean and shiny. But over here, there's dust. The seats are dirty. Whoever had Wendy's last threw their trash in the back seat. There's their drinking straw. I'm going to say it again. Nobody wants to see your drinking straws or your trash or your paper from when you last had lunch. It's disgusting whether or not you're just giving someone a ride or selling your vehicle. Just don't do that. You really would stand to lose $500 or more if I was buying your car and I saw all this stuff. I would start in my mind really cutting down on the price that you're asking. Now the next thing we're going to look at, and will be the last thing, is the engine bay. And most people actually don't even care or even understand what's going on under the hood. But if you're one of those people that wants a clean engine bay, or if you're a buyer and you would like to see a clean engine bay, I'm going to give you some tips on selling your car the things that should not be seen or done under the hood. Let's take a look. On the driver's side, you can see that the engine's clean, it's been painted. It doesn't need to be spotless. It doesn't need to be gleaming and shining. It just needs to be presentable. There's no trash over here. There's no oil leaks. If you have oil leaks, you might want to get those addressed so it's not nasty looking. Everything's in order. Everything's in good shape in operational shape. Now let's take a look at the other side. Okay, so I open your hood and the first thing I see is the rag you used last time you worked on your car. I don't want your dirty old rag. In fact, if I'm looking at your car and I'm going to buy it, I'll probably take your rag and throw it at you. So I don't want that in my car, if I'm going to be buying it for sure. And just like in the trunk when we saw the antifreeze bottles, nobody wants to see your oil bottles in your engine bay where you stuffed them and hid them away. Speaking of that, if I start seeing antifreeze bottles and oil bottles, I'm starting to think something's wrong with your car. And I'm going to start digging and asking questions. If there's some potential oil usage or something going on in your engine, don't let that question arise by leaving a bottle under the hood. There's so many times people, oh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to have that in there. This is power steering fluid, but I'm giving you the idea. This could be engine oil or, or anything else. Also, no one wants your pliers. Those go in your toolbox. They don't go as part of the car for the sale. And neither does the trash from the last part or pieces and the old pieces that were replaced. Throw them away. Put them in the trash. There's your dirty rags again. Get them out. Out, 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 out. Get all this stuff out. Because, like I said, I want you guys to get top dollar. I'm showing you how to do that. These hey, things are. Hmm. You, you missed a spot. You got so many empty holes around here. You missed one. Oh, yeah. Another hidden oil bottle in the front here. Half empty. You'd be surprised after I've purchased vehicles, I even find things that I couldn't even see or find. Items stuffed away in secret compartments. It's like, what? What in the world? Get it out. It doesn't belong in there. You want somebody to buy your car and leave with only the car, not your bottles of oil and pliers and everything else. And they don't close hoods like that anymore, do they? So you got cash in your pocket to burn. Which side are you gonna buy? Which caddy are you gonna buy? And let's say that I asked 10 grand for this. Which one are you gonna be more apt to give the 10 grand for? Which side will it be? So this is a simple video, there's really not a whole lot to it, but yet there is a lot to it. And that is cash in you guys' pocket. But Car Wizard, don't you remember we actually bought a truck that was totally trashed on the inside? 
What about that? Yeah, I knew the bones of the truck as far as the structure and the engine and transmission was in very good shape. And those are one of the instances when I let it slide that it was dirty or things are out of whack inside the interior. I knew I could fix those things because I would rather clean the interior than to have to have a paint job done on the car or have a transmission rebuilt or something along those lines. Those are instances where you could possibly let a dirty interior slide or something like that. And you could, I guess, if you know the car is mechanically perfect, the body is perfect, but there is trash in it, you could use as a buyer, you could use all that to your advantage. You could say, this thing is trash, man. I'm not going to give you 10 grand for this Cadillac. I'll give you eight. Well, I'll take nine. Okay, well, you just, you just, the, the seller just lost a thousand dollars and you just gained a thousand dollars because of trash. It, you can use that to your advantage as a buyer. As a seller, don't let these items cut you short on your asking price. Just clean them up. Then when somebody comes around and looks at the car, they're going to have to find something else to try to, because if the car is in immaculate condition and very clean and you've moved all these items out of the car, they're going to have to search that much harder and try to find something to bring that price down. And dirtiness or cleanliness is not even going to be an option because it's going to be clean just like I showed you guys. A lot of you guys have been purchasing tools from my Amazon Affiliates link and I really appreciate that. I do get a small cut out of that and that really helps me out. And I really, really appreciate that. If you're curious what kind of tools I use, everything that I use is listed on my Amazon Affiliates link in the description below. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button, you got many, many more cool videos to come. I, like I said in the previous video, I just purchased another vehicle and that is yet to come and you guys don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching.